So Elon Musk apparently hates it when I get a good night's sleep and insists on tweeting certain things that apparently compel me to make videos about. So once again, we're here talking about him and of course his antics regarding Twitter. Now I'm sure most of you know what the basics are here. If you don't, then you should check out my previous videos on this topic, which will be down below in the description. But really quickly, Elon Musk likes free speech. Twitter stifles free speech and Elon has been pretty vocal about his opposition to this. There have been rumors and jokes about Elon buying up Twitter and changing it himself. And then the other day, he literally did that. He bought 9.2% of Twitter and instantly became the largest single shareholder, owning four times as much of the company as the literal founder, Jack Dorsey. Now, he bought these shares as a passive investor, more on that later, but basically that means he didn't intend to change the way the company was run. But the day this happened, I called that out and said there is no chance in hell Elon bought this as a passive investment and he absolutely wants to institute change. And within literally one day of that video being up, we saw him do just that and take an active position in the company. So what exactly happened? What are we actually talking about right now? Well, Elon has taken a board seat at Twitter, literally one day after buying his shares. This seems to be part of a deal made between Elon and the current owners and board members of Twitter, as a part of this board seat being given to him comes with a requirement that he doesn't own more than 14.9% of the company. This means that Elon is probably going to buy more Twitter at some point, another billion dollars or so, taking him close to that limit, but he isn't going to buy out an absolutely huge share. This was announced by Parag, the current CEO of the company, with these tweets. I'm excited to share that we're appointing Elon Musk to our board. Through conversations with Elon in recent weeks, it became clear to us that he would bring great value to the board. He's both a passionate believer and intense critic of the service, which is exactly what we need on Twitter and in the boardroom to make us stronger in the long term. Welcome, Elon. To which Elon replied, looking forward to working with Parag and Twitter board to make significant improvements to Twitter in recent months. Now, I think this tweet probably does the best job explaining what is really going on behind the scenes for Parag right now. We then got a bunch of other tweets from Elon indicating some things he might like to change about Twitter, starting with this poll. Do you want an edit button, yes or no, with yes intentionally spelled incorrectly, showing that Elon would quite like an edit button to correct mistakes. 4.4 million votes with 74% of them wanting an edit button, it seems Elon has his first pet project with his board seat. He also responded to a tweet complaining about crypto spam bots and he said it's the single most annoying problem on Twitter in his opinion. Frankly, if Elon comes to Twitter and just makes outright improvements like adding an edit button and removing crypto spam accounts, then I don't see how anyone can oppose what he's doing. Finally, we then saw Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter and one of its largest individual shareholders who stopped being CEO of Twitter about a year ago in what didn't seem like a friendly affair. He came out and tweeted, I'm really happy Elon is joining the Twitter board. He cares deeply about our world and Twitter's role in it. Parag and Elon both lead with their hearts and they will be an incredible team. So Elon is making moves. He is now the largest individual shareholder in the company. He has a board seat and he wants to change how the company operates. The problem is the company operates the way it does because of Parag. And in my opinion, he is basically a dead man walking at this point. Elon does not like the way he runs the company. They're playing nice on Twitter because of course they are. They don't want to drag out their private disagreements into the public, but I almost guarantee that Prague will not be in charge for long. Elon will use the positive effects he's had on the company like its share price skyrocketing as leverage. His huge fan base will vote however he wants them to in the future now that they've been buying up shares. And before long, he will probably basically run Twitter being able to appoint whoever he wants as CEO. Now, there are two things I want to talk about that most people aren't mentioning. And the first is related to Elon's passive ownership. Now, what this is, is just odd, really. The way we found out about his purchase of these shares is through his financial filings that he reported as the quarter ended. And this purchase was filed under a 13G format, which means he's a passive investor and will not change or affect how the company is run. He is supposed to just sit along for the ride, but of course he isn't doing that though. He is affecting how the company is run. The board seat alone makes it near impossible for him to claim otherwise, so I'm not sure why he didn't just file this as a 13D, which is an active investment. Maybe he planned on being passive when he first started buying up shares. Maybe he just doesn't care about the SEC or any other authorities, and that is my view of this at least, but he might get into some trouble regarding this action. 
Now, full disclosure here, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an American lawyer, and I'm not an American securities lawyer, so I really don't know what might come of this, but this does seem just like an incorrect filing, and most experts don't really know what to make of it either, but they think that something might come out of it as well. We kind of just have to wait and see, really. If nothing else, I do really feel sorry for Elon's lawyers. I hope they're paid damn well for their overtime. Now finally, it is also just a little bit funny to watch certain people's heads spin as all of a sudden Elon is taking action regarding free speech. For a long time now, I'm talking years even, the left has defended Twitter's decision to ban certain people like Donald Trump, place fact check warnings on things they don't agree with, just in general commit to big tech censorship with the argument that Twitter is a private company they can do as they please. The argument against this is that Twitter acts as a public forum, akin to the literal Roman forum of ancient times, and deplatforming is a way of stifling free speech. Now this topic as a whole is really damn long, very nuanced, and I made a video about it a few weeks ago, which you can go and check out, link down below in the description if you want more on that. But the funny thing is, those people who used to make that argument that Twitter is a private company would also say things like, if you don't like it, go and start your own Twitter, or buy Twitter and change it. Only now that someone is actually doing that, they're complaining that this isn't what free speech is and that Elon shouldn't be able to do this. This weird old man, for example, has no sense of irony or the fact that hypocrisy is not the most attractive trait and the Washington Post is apparently upset that the current world's richest man is having an influence over our media just a year after the previous world's richest man bought that publication out and started influencing our media as well. If nothing else, this whole ordeal is giving us some people to laugh at, and that's always welcome in my book. Now, on one final note, for all of the aspiring entrepreneurs out there, myself included, if you make your product bad enough and it annoys Elon Musk just enough, he might just buy 9% of your company and try to fix it for you. So keep on grinding. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that allows you to buy fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy, which can be a great way to diversify your portfolio with non-market correlated assets. It's completely free to sign up, so if that sounds interesting, to make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get 9% interest on stable coins like USDC, which is a far higher rate than you get from any savings account these days. Thanks for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.